always been out of my reach. So I built my own. Imagine being able to walk around with a digital camera that shoots true anamorphic images with a sensor as large as an IMAX camera. This is the Hasselblad H6D100C. Medium format digital camera with a sensor as large as an IMAX camera. So recently I machined an adapter to mount an anamorphic projector lens on a Hasselblad 500cm medium format film camera. Hasselblad saw the video I posted about this project and reached out to me wanting to see if I was interested in trying this adapter setup on their digital medium format camera. This camera comes in at around $32,000 and has a sensor that's literally the size of the screen on my A7. It is basically the top of the line digital camera that money can buy. But this camera ergonomically is pretty awesome. The grip on this camera is so comfortable and the grip itself is the battery for the camera. So it's actually pretty cool. This is definitely not a small or light camera, but there's a reason why it's the size that it is. Take the back off and it's very intimidating because what you're holding in your hand is like $20,000 worth of sensor. You look at that thing and you can fall into it and you go swimming in the sensor because it's basically the ocean that you're looking at. The camera is really cool because it's very modular so pretty much every piece of it comes apart and you can put it back together just like the film Hasselblad. It's really a unique camera because it still has that very deep analog heritage, but it's literally the top of the line digital camera. It's a very unique experience using it. Being able to walk around with this anamorphic lens and just point my camera at something and turn it into a frame from a movie is infinitely enjoyable. An anamorphic lens is different than a typical camera lens. It gives you a wider image than you would normally get at any given focal length. With a 50 millimeter anamorphic lens, you would get the same vertical field of view as a 50 millimeter lens but you would actually get a wider image on the sides than a typical 50 millimeter lens. So this gives you a really interesting perspective that you can't get with any other type of lens. So that's something very unique to anamorphic and it's something very characteristic of cinema in general. I was absolutely blown away by how much my little anamorphic lens resolved on that 100 megapixel sensor. I was honestly worried that it wasn't going to hold up to that scrutiny of 100 megapixels, considering my anamorphic lens is actually not a fantastic copy. It has some fungus in it. That fungus has eaten into the glass. I've taken it apart and it just will not go away. <laughs> So I was really surprised that the images coming out of that were like insanely sharp, even with an anamorphic lens that's made for a Super 16 projection. It was honestly very surprising. Not only does this camera shoot incredible photos, but it actually shoots 4K raw video as well. So you can kind of think of this camera sort of like a 5D Mark II. It was a primarily a photo camera first, but they added video features because they could, basically. 
I'm really interested to see what people will end up doing this camera in terms of uh, filmmaking because this camera is is basically an IMAX camera. The size of the sensor is larger than the Alexa 65. That's pretty crazy when you think about it, being significantly cheaper than an Alexa or any of those cinema cameras. If you were able to get over kind of the fact that it wasn't really made specifically to shoot video and and you can kind of get past some of the quirks in the way that you have to use it. I could see this being huge for indie filmmakers. If you were to shoot a, a short film on what is basically IMAX on this camera, would instantly lend your project some, a very unique look that no one else, as far as I know, has done before. Like, I can't really think of anybody who's shot like a short film on, on an Alexa 65 or 70 millimeter film and from a camera that, you know, wasn't really made to shoot video. But if you, you know, just get over the fact that it's not really like that and then just kind of work with it, I think you can get some really amazing stuff. So I shot a little bit of video while I had this camera, but unfortunately I only had a 32 gigabyte CFast card and shooting 4K raw video, that filled that card up almost instantaneously. I think I got a couple minutes of record time. Yeah, so it was a it was a little rough going shooting video for me just because of the amount of space I had. Regardless, like shooting video on on medium format is a really, really cool experience. Even if you don't know what makes anamorphic anamorphic, you still subconsciously feel like that's a movie because that's what pretty much every movie is shot with. So it kind of works on a subconscious level to, to camera geeks and lens nerds. They can spot the specific characteristics like the anamorphic flare, the blue streaked lens flares, or the oval bokeh, or, you know, some of the kind of distortion and vignetting and all that stuff. But to the layman, there's kind of a subconscious feeling that goes with anamorphic that's really kind of hard to put your finger on. If you like this video, or if you're just a fan of Anamorphic, hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.